This is part two in our series on quantifiers. In this video, we introduce and talk about quantifiers and give lots of examples of how they are used. Quantifiers play an indispensable role in understanding and writing mathematics, so it's crucial that you learn how to make correct use of them. So suppose we have a, an open sentence, p of x, uh, which we want to make into a proposition. In order to do that, we have to do two things. First of all, we have to make it clear what is the universal set that the uh, variable x comes from. And secondly, we need to include a quantifier for x. Now, there are two kinds of quantifiers, the universal quantifier and the existential quantifier. The universal quantifier is denoted with this symbol, and in words you would say, for every or for all. The existential quantifier is denoted with this symbol, and in words you would say there exists or for some. Now in order to turn a given open sentence p of x into a proposition, uh, we have two ways that we can accomplish that. Each of the ways involves, at least if you're writing it in symbols, um, writing, before you write the p of x, you write this or this. This one is read, for all x in u, p of x is true. And the meaning of that is that the truth set of p of x is all of u. In other words, p of x is true for every single x in u. This one is read, there exists an x in u such that p of x is true, or we could say p of x is true for some x in u. The meaning of that is that the truth set of p of x has at least one element in it. It is non-empty. And so what I've done is I've made use of the information in this box, or the technique I described in this box, in order to turn an open sentence into a proposition. Here are some exercises for you to practice these ideas on. Each of these propositions started out as an open sentence. And uh, each one has been made into a proposition by adding information about the associated universal set and a quantifier. So what I want you to do is write what it says in a sentence, being sure to use a grammatically correct and well-written sentence, and try to write your answer or your sentence so that it doesn't sound awkward or stilted. Put your video on pause, work out these problems, and when you return we'll go over my answers. Okay, here are my answers. Let's go over them together. So the first thing to notice is you should always read from left to right. So as I read this from left to right, I say there exists a real number x such that x is greater than or equal to 3. Some students will read this as there exists x element of the real numbers such that x is bigger than or equal to 3. So that's what I would consider to be an awkward, stilted kind of way of expressing it. So um, don't say it that way. Say there exists a real number x such that x is bigger than or equal to 3. Another thing that students will sometimes do is they'll, they'll think that this is the end of the sentence. They'll say, there exists a real number x, period, and then they'll say x is bigger than or equal to 3. So that's not correct. This is the entire sentence. There exists a real number x such that x is bigger than or equal to 3. Now that's certainly a true statement because, of course, there exist real numbers that are 3 or more. Now, number two is exactly the same as number one, except we've changed the quantifier to this universal quantifier. It says, for every real number x, comma, x is greater than or equal to three. So that's false because it's impossible for, uh, it's not the case that every real number is greater than or equal to three. Some of them are less than three. This one says, 
there exists an integer x such that x is less than 0 and x is bigger than 3. That's now a proposition, but it's false uh, because it's impossible for there to be um, a single integer which is simultaneously less than 0 and bigger than 3. It would be true if we replace this conjunction with a disjunction, with an OR statement, with an OR um, um, connective. So be very careful about your use of the connectives um, and make sure that you use them accurately. It, it makes a very big difference. And this one says, for every real number x, either x is less than 0 or x equals 0 or x is bigger than 0. That's true. Um, it just simply expresses the fact that the real numbers can be partitioned into three disjoint sets, the negative numbers, the positive numbers, and 0. Here are uh, three more exercises for you to try. Same question as before. Write them out in words and then decide if they're true or false. Put the video on hold and um, give it a try. So number five says that for every natural number x, x plus x is greater than x. If you subtract x from both sides, that just says that x is bigger than zero. And it's certainly true that every natural number is greater than zero. So it's a true statement. And in six, we just simply change the universal set to the set of integers, and it's not true that every integer is bigger than zero, and so that's a false proposition. Number seven says, there exists a real number x such that e to the x is equal to x. Uh, this one is a little bit harder to decide because, um, well, it's not quite so obvious. Um, so one technique for doing that might be to draw the graphs of e to the x and x on the same set of uh, coordinate axes and see if they ever seem to cross. Well, here you see the graph of uh, y, equals e to the, uh, y equals x, and here's the graph of y equals e to the x, and it appears that they will never cross. Uh, for one thing, um, if x is negative, the exponential function is positive, and x is negative. <clears throat> and for x positive, uh, the exponential starts out by being bigger than x, and we know that the exponential grows at a much faster rate than the function x does. Um, and so we would expect that the answer, that, uh, that this is a false proposition. And here are four more for you to try. The first one involves a conditional statement, so remember how you're supposed to phrase that in words. And the remaining three involve two variables and therefore two quantifiers. Okay, so give them a try. And uh, when you come back, I'll uh, share my answers with you. All right, for number eight, we'll read this as, for every integer x, if x is odd, then x squared is odd. Okay, so remember, that's how we say in words p implies q. We either say if p then q, or we could say p implies q. I think in this case it's better to say for every integer x, if x is odd, then x squared is odd. So now you have to think about whether or not you believe that that's true. I'm really not asking for a proof at this stage. I just want to know what your intuition tells you. So just try square or uh, squaring a bunch of odd integers, and you'll see that they all seem to come out to be odd as well. And so that is a true statement. We'll write a proof, a more formal proof, shortly. Now in number nine, you'll notice we have two quantifiers, but they're exactly the same. They're both ex existential. So I could say there exists a real number x and there exists a real number y such that this happens. But since they're the same, um, we can 
refer to both of them at the same time and just simply say there exist real numbers x and y such that x squared plus y squared is equal to minus 1. Now, is that true or false? Well, when you square real numbers, you can't get a negative number. And, so, and when you add two non-negative numbers, you can't get something negative. And so that must be a false proposition. For number 10, now we've got two quantifiers, but this time they're different. And so make sure you read it from left to right. For every real number x, there exists a real number y such that x plus y is equal to 0. So what they're saying is if you give yourself an arbitrary or a generic real number x, then you can find another real number y such that they add up to 0. Well, that's true because the y that, you would, that would work here would be negative x. And negative x is, is a real number if x is a real number. Now, in number 11, I've written exactly the same uh, proposition, except I've reversed the order in which the variables appear. And you'll notice that it makes a big difference, because in words it says, there exists a real number y, such that for every real number x, x plus y is equal to 0. In other words, there's this very special real number y with the property that no matter what real number you add to it, you get 0. And that's impossible. Um, and so it's a false proposition.